I'm fond, nereids and nymphs, unlike some of the pig, of the tusker, the snout, the boar, and the swine. One way or another, all pigs have been mine. Under my thumb, the bristling, salty skin of their backs. In my nostrils, here, their yobby, porky colognes. I'm familiar with hogs and runts, their percussion of oinks and grunts, their squeals. I've stood with a pail of swill at dusk at the creaky gate of the sty, tasting the sweaty, spicy air, the moon like a lemon popped in the mouth of the sky. But I want to begin with a recipe from abroad, which uses the cheek, and the tongue in cheek at that. Lay two pig's cheeks with the tongue in a dish and stew it well over with, strew it well over with salt and chives. Remember the skills of the tongue to lick, to lap, to loosen, lubricate, to lie in the soft pouch of the face, and how each pig's face was uniquely itself as many handsome as plain, the cowardly face, the brave, the cynical, noble, sly, or wise, the cruel, the kind, but all of them nymphs with those piggy eyes. Season with mace. Well, cleaned pig's ears should be blanched Singed, tossed in a pot, boiled, kept hot, scraped, served, garnished with thyme. Look at that simmering lug at, the, at that ear. Did he listen? Did it listen ever to you, to your prayers and rhymes, to the chimes of your voice singing and clear? Mash the potatoes, nymph, open the beer. Now to the brains, to the trotters, shoulders, chops, to the sweetmeats slipped from the slit, bulging, vulnerable bag of the balls. When the heart of a pig has hardened, dice it small, dice it small. I too once knelt on this shining shore, watching the tall ship sail from the burning sun like myths, slipped off my dress to wade breast deep in the sea, waving and calling, then plunged, then swam on my back, looking up at three black ships, sighed in the shadow waves. Of course, I was young then, and hoping for men. Now, let us base that sizzling pig on the spit once again. <laughs>
Remember these three words to feel good. Hope, love, peace is the way. Hope, love, peace is the way I say. Hope, love, peace is the way. Hope, love, peace is the way. If the world feels too heavy to bear in your soul and your heart is on empty and you feel far from whole. If you're feeling angry, confused and alone, just remember these three words to come home to yourself. Remember these three words to come home. is the way I say hope, love, peace is the way, hope, love, peace is the way. Three words. <laughs> Meteorology with an epigraph from Walkie Charles, who was a Yupik Eskimo third grade teacher who worked in our school for the year. And he always said every day, the teacher is the weather of the classroom. <laughs> Jason's stepfather put his fist through glass. The police called again, finally a restraining order. Martha, unschooled for years, survived Nigeria's civil war and values each day without gunfire. Duane's mother died from heroin. On her birthday, his family fixes her favorite foods, leaves a warm plate at an empty seat. So many words for snow, one syllable for school. They do not choose their families. I do not choose my class. Most days, I'm like a commissioned officer with rebellious sailors impressed for duty. We hoist cumbersome sails, carry our cargo of personalities the best we can. The weather unpredictable humor my anecdote for seasickness. But what will quell the harsh squalls of their young lives? I want them to learn that each day is new, a starting over, that knowledge is more than mere facts of a lemon or a lemming, a date, a definition, that our lessons might hold them in wonder, not fear, that they might control their own futures through their efforts, that Tierra del Fuego is just a location on a map. Knock, knock, goes the ego, as I sit floating in a calm sea of being. Knock, knock, again, I remain in the chair. Ignore it, says the voice of inner knowing. Quiet whispers, quiet whispers. Knock, knock, again, insistent is this ego, wanting to come in, join the party. Louder still, and the door vibrates. Oh, to shut it up, this banging, this intrusion in my life. A pause, and silence is restored. I regain my equilibrium, feel calm again, a mellowing acceptance in this room of old age. Laugh lines on the ceiling, ever more threadbare. Windows to the soul misty, dust laden. Walls less sturdy than before. The room cluttered with memories, some easier to find than others in the boxes of the past. Piled high, one on top of the other. Knock, knock again. The sound fills the room. Stubborn, urgent ego sounds 
anxious to be heard. Let me in, I want to be heard. I must be heard. Walk to the door and reach for the handle. No, says the spirit. No, says the soul. Leave it, keep it closed. Open up, calls the ego, knocking, knocking. Spirit says closed, do not answer. I am trapped, pulled in two, voices in my head, open, close, open, close. Knocking, knocking, where to go, where to go? Surely there must be another door for me here. Knock, knock, may I come in? And the door of death creeps, begins to open, welcoming, welcoming. tree with roots both shallow and deep, tap roots for the things of the body, water and nourishment from the deep places and ground roots pushed up above the earth for seeking a taste of mottled sunlight sifted through a bright green cloak of leaves to feed my ancient soul. And I have branches too, and twigs, all held up by this sturdy trunk with its rough bark and bowls, its nests and holes. I house mosses and mice and fungi at my toes. Squirrels, nests, chirplings, beetles and ants, tent caterpillars, a downy woodpecker, a great horned owl, and the occasional hawk sitter in my hair. What a bountiful affair. Some red buds appear in spring, waiting to unfurl into the vibrant yellows and greens of summer. Jewels of orange and gold and crimson burst the chilly covers of night to reveal themselves in autumn's early dew. Some fly away early, drained and dull, browning and crisping before falling at my feet as winter's hoary breath starts to freeze my sap. The blood of my solid and hollow places. <coughs> and if I am a tree, friend, then you are the water and the food. the soil that I procure and inhabit, my solid place on this earth. You are the sun and the wind that brings joyful life to my leaves, blowing through them to revive me when my resolve to thrive begins to falter. out my window and just by chance 
was this strange bird that caught my glance Perched on a post and longer wing than most He tried his best to hold his stand So I searched through my Audubon guide Page 56 to my surprise A storm petrel of oceans wide and far How did you end up in my yard? Lost at sea just like me, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, with wings so wide, yet too tired to fly, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Storm petrel, come rest up in my tree And I will feed you bread, give you some tea You were blown off course, but you'll always know true north One day you'll fly back to your sea You'll find your way, you'll be okay so hold on, hold on, trust on, trust on This place is strange, but there's friends in range So trust on, trust on, and hold on, hold on Thanks very much. I'm lying on the floor opposite this glass ceiling. I'm lying on the floor opposite this glass ceiling. I'm lying on the floor opposite this glass ceiling. I'm calling out to friends and family, but they can't hear me. I'm banging on the glass, but they can't see me. I know it's been a while. You haven't heard from me, but I've been locked away in my asylum, breathing, new breath, new life, with new shoes and new title, wife. Goals have been shifted, generational curses lifted, recognizing my gift is still worth mentioning. I move forward because if I don't, that's backwards. I try to speak to catch up, but nothing comes out. There's nothing to say, can we even relate? I'm lying on the floor opposite this glass ceiling. When did I get here? I'm trying to reach my siblings. We've drifted apart, and that's probably my fault. My path is narrow, purpose called. Somehow I've transitioned through the ceiling, this glass ceiling floor, not sure how I did it. Now past faces look at me like a ghost gone who's come back, like an enemy whom they attacked. Perhaps I just changed, perhaps me they blame, maybe they just resent my fame. I'm lying on the floor opposite this glass ceiling. I disappeared to better myself, to center myself. Now I'm lying on the floor opposite this glass ceiling. I'm reaching back to old friends, but they are not feeling me. Some do, most don't. 
And that's a shame because I won't let that stop me from grabbing that which is in front of me, my destiny. And not everybody is happy for me. I turn my back to meditate and they take it personally. Like I ignored them spitefully when actually my path was paved differently. Because of that, people don't seem to recognize me, looking at me as if they deceive me, and now amazed that I'm blissfully breathing, leading me to believe that they might have been shady. Friends, can't live with them? Somehow, I live without them. The more I push forward, the further I grow from my acquaintances. Skeptical of who I trust, past relationships tainted. I'm lying on the floor opposite this glass ceiling. My friends no longer like me. Some of my family secretly despises me, all because I'm happy? All because I reached a certain degree of success? I guess that's just human nature, because a certain amount of success inevitably reflects a certain amount of failure. It's lonely at the top, but that's, at the top I'm not, yet I'm not at the bottom. I'm lying on the floor, opposite the glass ceiling. I'm lying on the floor, opposite the glass ceiling, feeling like <laughs> it's just time to get up. <laughs> Like a quiet stream on a summer morning, I am on the outside calm, even ordinary, but inside the fire. Your lips on mine seared into memory, passion and peace, embracing our embrace, wrapping each waking moment in a bomb of fireworks. But on the outside, ordinary, even calm, like a quiet stream on a summer morning. When I was very young, my mother took me on walks in Humboldt Park along the edge of the Prairie River. I have vague memories, like images on glass plates, an old boathouse, a curved band shell, an arched stone bridge. The narrows of the river emptied into a wide gorge, and on its surface I witnessed a singular miracle a long neck curving up from a dress of white plumage. Swan, my mother said, sensing my excitement. It patted, its, it patted the bright water, flooded its great wings, and lifted into the sky. The word, swan, I said, the word hardly attested to its magnificence, nor conveyed the emotions it produced. The sight of it, generated an urge for which I had no words, a desire to speak of the swan, to say something of its whiteness, of the explosiveness of its movements, the slow beating of its great wings. The swan became one with the sky. I struggled to find the words to describe my own sense of it, Swan, I repeated, not entirely satisfied. And I felt a twinge, a curious yearning, imperceptible to passers-by, my mother, the tree, the trees or the clouds. So what happened when I just read this a little while ago? What got me was her connection with that toddler mind, her own toddler mind, and those moments when everything is new and exciting. And it reminded me of, exper of an experience I had a few years ago, walking on the beach in Portsmouth on a, on a late spring night with a friend, looking at a nearly full moon over the ocean. And a question popped into my head. No, not that question. Odd. The question was, Hey, do you remember the first time you saw the moon? And as I was asking it, I had this image. I was holding my mom's hand, one of my first forays out at night in front of our apartment building in, in Brooklyn. And I don't know if I had seen it before, but I looked up at the sky at this orb, this glowing orb, and I was excited. I said, what is that thing? And I mentioned it just because 
I asked her if she could remember something like that, and she couldn't. But I think we have, we all have that capability, and so I'm asking you if you could remember the first time you saw something that just blew you away, whether it was a swan or the moon or a butterfly. And rather than an exercise in frivolity, I think it's important because I really do believe that every moment, how we approach every moment is a matter of our intention. And the possibility exists for approaching every moment, even now, as fresh, as new, as something wonderful. Thank you.